probably once you get started. Okay. So then, all right. All right, all. It is 7.30. We are going to give just maybe two more minutes to allow some people to pop on. I've got 85 attendees right now, so you know people are trying to join.
All right, all. It is 7.32. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so again, just so you guys know, this is being recorded. So anything that you say and do can be held against you. Um, Thank you guys for being on here. It looks like we've got over 100 attendees, which is great. Uh, this is being recorded. Like I said, it'll be posted um, on our website tomorrow or at least sent out to our coaches to make sure that everybody's got the information there. Um, I do have some panelists on here. Uh, Bruce Ennen is my uh, coordinator of officials. So he is on here. It looks like Lanny's on here as well, Lanny Brand, who's helping with one of our regional sites. And then we've got Matthew Shannon on here as well, coming from um, a tournament. So he is on the road, but we've tested his audio. Um, so I'm going to you know, direct any really specific questions about maybe bracketing or criteria or seating or things like that to Matthew. Um, he is running all of our uh, super regional and uh, state tournament track wrestling um, information. So he is going to be coordinating all of that and kind of running those things remotely. We will have people on site at all of those regionals to help troubleshoot and make any changes and things like that. But he is going to be the brains behind the operation there. So we'll get a little bit more into that later. Um, just a few housekeeping things. So some of you guys have noticed that when you um, are trying to have an athlete who is in the 100 pound weight class, uh, take a two pound growth allowance, we're running into some issues there. So that's something that we saw pretty early on and um, had made track aware of that. They said that they were you know, um, trying to work on those things. Long story short, we had a meeting with them last week and, and Matt was on that as well. And they, um, there's just really not much that they can do on their end. It's a settings issue and they essentially would have to go back and recalculate a bunch of stuff for the season. So um, they've given us some guidelines on how to help our coaches correct that. I know I've had a ton of people uh, reach out already that we've kind of worked through that a little bit, but just um, please reach out to me if you're having that issue and I can help guide that and kind of go from there. But essentially what you need to do is um, take your, um, take your, any sort of way in sheets and your descent plan and things like that with you to those meets, maybe have some printouts and whatnot. And um, as much as we hate to tell people to do this to their weigh-in sheets, um, if you just need to mark that and note that on your weigh-in sheet, um, that it is allowed, again, have the have the materials there to, to back that up if questioned. Um, but that's just how we're going to have to do that for the 100 pound weight class. That's the only weight class we've seen issues in and that track wrestling can detect. So none of your other information should be messed with at that point. But again, feel free to reach out to me and I can kind of help give you some guidance on some of those things. But know that if you are hosting a tournament um, in the next couple of weeks, um, you may be running into coaches who are having that issue. So um, that is a very real thing. It'll be fixed for next year. Um, Another thing we need to do is make sure to update your records, um, your, your girls' records in track wrestling. There's a lot of people who haven't even yet touched those. That's going to be really big moving into our postseason as far as uh, seating criteria, things like that. So make sure you start doing that immediately if you haven't started already. Um, just get ahead of the game that way. Um, Matt, did you have anything that you wanted to add into any of those two things yet? Not at this time. Okay, thanks. Um, and so, okay, um, again, if you don't have those records updated, there's not going to be a lot that we can do for you in terms of your seating and your criteria and things like that for your girls come postseason. Um, okay, so I am unable to do screen share. Uh, we tried to work through that and troubleshoot that with um, our tech person in my office, but there's a settings issue. Um, so I'm going to just kind of tell you where on our website some of this stuff is found if you haven't found it already. So when we sent out this information for the webinar, we also sent out our state um, or our postseason tournament manual. And so uh, when you're going to our website, ighsau.org, uh, right below the bright pink tab on the top, the toolbar on the top or the, the update bar, it says updates and information. 
right under that, there is a blue tab that says Wrestling Tournament Central. Okay, so click on that and you can guide other people to click on that. It's the first thing really that you see when you're um, on our homepage there. But that has information for both our super regional and state tournament, okay? So as we get more information, we are going to be um, updating, updating that site. And um, so just continue to refer to that if you have questions and um, you know about schedules or things like that. So um, again, that is where that information is found and you can direct anybody that needs to have that there. Um, so we're gonna just kind of go through some of this stuff. We've got, you know, our regional assignments have been listed. Um, I think that at this point you are under a rock if you haven't seen them, but if you need a reference, it's under that tab, okay? Um, if you have any questions about that, you know, obviously let me know, uh, really that process, how we've rolled it out seems to be pretty well received. Um, you know, I was nervous that we would miss somebody, but apparently the only thing that I missed was the D in Humboldt. So totally my bad spelled that wrong. Um, but I guess at this point, if that's my biggest issue, um, with regional so far, I'll take it. Um, the other thing to talk about too is if you don't intend to participate or if something comes up or maybe you've just got one or two athletes, maybe they end up ineligible, somebody ends up hurt, you know that you're, you're, you know, whatever you have as a team is not going to be uh, represented at postseason. Please let us know immediately um, because we need to uh, remove you from that site at that point or no to not expect you. Um, so uh, again, just to go through the very basics of our super regionals here, um, it, we are having two regions at each location. Okay, so the locations are again listed on the website. We've got Tyson Arena in Sioux City. We've got Iowa Event Center, Hy-Vee Hall in Des Moines. We've got our Cedar Rapids location, which is the Alliant Powerhouse US Cellular Center. Um, and then up in Decorah, we have Luther College. So originally when we were rolling this out, we were going to just have uh, four regions, right? And so then as we started to see the numbers climb in participation as far as our programs, um, we needed to make changes there. And so the best way uh, to do that at the end of the day, after a lot of discussion was to put two regions at each site. So to be clear about that, they will be two separate tournaments happening at the same time at the same site, okay? So region one and region two, for instance, at Tyson Arena uh, will be four mats for region one and four mats for region two, okay? So they won't cross over um, anything like that. We're gonna do our best to keep those, to keep those separate. Um, and so every, every space has a plan for that, okay? But they will be, again, running alongside each other. So they are going to start at the same time and we will wrestle the beginning of each round. We'll start each round at the same time, okay? So again, if you have a question about the format or the schedule of those rounds, that is also listed under that tournament's, um, tournament central site there. Um, and so that's really just to keep us on track for the day. Again, our regions right now, based on our numbers, are pretty even. So I don't think that there's, you know, one's going to run way ahead than the other. Um, but we do, at the end of the day, want to be able to do our awards all at the same time and together. So um, the top four from each of our weight classes from each region will move on. Okay, so that looks like eight from a site from each weight class, but four per region. Okay. So just again, to just clarify that, I've had some questions on those things, um, but I think everybody's kind of understanding that moving forward. So um, something that we do need to bring up is that if there, for some reason, um, there's an injury, an illness, an ineligibility, something like that, that happens that week of state, then we will take the fifth place finisher from that region and bump them up. Um, into that. So that's kind of the conversation that we've had. So while we will only medal out to four places within track wrestling, we'll have a six, fifth and sixth place um, that we will wrestle through to make sure that we know who that fifth place person is. So uh, just be aware of that, that that's, as we know, always a possibility in wrestling moving forward. Um, 
Okay, so kind of going through that, I've got my notes here. I just really quickly want to kind of go through our wrestling manual, okay? Um, our postseason manual, because uh, I do think that it's obviously something that's new. Um, while it is similar to the boys, it is there. there is some differences here that we wanna be able to talk through, but really it's because I want you guys to be able to have the information so that you're prepared because there's work that we're asking you to do um, the week before uh, you guys all attend the super regional qualifier. Um, so just running through the schedule really quick. Um, we are starting our wrestling tournament it is going to begin at 11 o'clock AM at all of our locations. Okay. So moving back from there, doors will open to our spectators at 10 o'clock AM. Okay. Not before that, if they're lined up outside the door, that happens with a lot of our events, that's just fine. Um, but we will not open to spectators until 10 a.m. Um, 9.30, we're going to have a coaches meeting. This meeting is not going to be a seating meeting. It's just going to be a general information, some housekeeping, some um, procedural type things for that day. Um, again, all of our seating is going to be done. So we're not going to, we're, we're not going to have that from site to site. Um, but just a general information meeting. Nine o'clock, we'll have our official weigh-ins, okay? So all of, our, all of our regions will have designated places for that. We're going to have multiple scales, so we should run through that pretty quickly. We will have our officials and our athletic trainers on site. So again, it will be well-oiled machine from space to space, okay? Um, and we will have at 7.30 in the morning is when our doors are going to open to essentially our, our pass doors, um, athlete pass entrances. So it'll open to wrestlers, coaches, and cheerleaders um, at 7.30 in the morning. So all of our places um, will have maps up on that, on that site um, in our tournament central so that you'll be able to click on your region that you're going to and you'll have some specific information for that. That would include parking maps and drop off locations and things like that. So be looking in, um, for that information as we go there, but um, we will have that available. And something to really kind of think about is, you know, we, we know on the boys side for how districts run and how, you know, sectionals in the past have run. And when schools host that, it's a little, you know, it can be a little loosey goosey in terms of, okay, whoever shows up in the morning is getting in and whatnot. Um, that's not going to be the case for our spaces, okay? Obviously with the spaces that we have rented out, they're massive, um, but they also, you know, they need a lot more control, okay? So we're going to be running these like mini state tournaments, okay? So when you, when your team shows up, okay? Whether that's one girl or 10 girls, whatever that is, um, you will have filled out um, your tournament roster, which we'll talk about here shortly. But essentially, you're going to go to those pass gates and you are going to um, have a list and we are going to have a packet ready for you, your program, based on the list that you've provided us. And it will have your entered athletes. They will have credentials. Coaches will have credentials. Um, uh, I, I believe we have enough for our, a head coach and assistant coach. And then if there are other coaches listed on that, then we'll have wristbands for them. But essentially, everybody is going to be marked when they come through that pass gate, okay? And if you have a bunch of changes and you have a bunch more people in your party than what um, you've indicated, then those are gonna, that's gonna be an issue, okay? So make sure that when you're filling out that form, it's correct and it's by the guidelines that we've got provided in that um, because we don't wanna deal with that the day of, okay? Um, we've been very fair in what we're going to allow for our super regional. And so I'll go through that here shortly. Um, what we need to make sure that we are doing as far as our tournament format and our entries, okay? Um, it is going to be one wrestler per weight class, per school or per program to be entered into the regional tournament, okay? So Matt is going to be sending out a link um, on track wrestling for the event, okay? So you're going to, just like any of the other events that you accept, um, he is going to get that set up and sent out this week so that you will have those um, 
you will have that to um, essentially accept in track wrestling, okay? So at that point, um, you are going to enter, um, put in your entries for regionals. Those are going to be due by Tuesday, January 24th at 10 a.m., okay? Very, very important deadline there, okay? So you need to make sure, um, go back into track wrestling, make sure your wrestlers' names are spelled correctly, okay? Because that's what we're going to use for all of our postseason, okay? If you need to update a spelling, I can do that for you. You just need to let us know. If you can do that this week and let us know, that would be preferred. Um, you need to update their grade and you need to um, update their record as well as we've already indicated, okay? And so, like I said, coaches, you'll get a notification from Matt regarding the event entries. So again, coming from Matt Shannon, not coming from Aaron Curley, okay? So um, you can expect those this week. Um, Matt, do you have anything to add to, to that or a specific date that they should look for that? No, I just look. I'm going to get the tournament stage probably tomorrow on Tuesday, and then my goal is to get them out on Wednesday, so that way you can start entering and any changes you might need to make or any of that sort of thing. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, and so um, at this point, what we're going to be doing, and again, this is all in that tournament information manual, but we're going to be doing a 32 person uh, wrestle back to third and uh, true fourth, okay? That's the bracket that we are going to be using for every weight class, okay? Depending on, you know, doesn't matter if there's eight, 16, 20, whatever. That, that's the bracket that we're going to be using through our postseason, okay? To capture, to capture all those numbers. So um, we did go ahead and put out the seating criteria as well. So you can take a look at this. Again, it's listed in that manual. Um, so, uh, First, uh, the first bullet on that is head to head. Okay, so we know how important it is for you all to have your information updated to be able to have head to head. Um, the second bullet we have is IWCOA state place finisher. Okay, so um, it was necessary for us to do this <clears throat> because really we just don't have a lot of, you know, hard and fast data to go on. We have obviously information from this season. Um, but we just needed a little bit more to make sure, um, really as, as it comes down to it, there's been a lot of, um, you know, a lot of matches wrestled with scrambles this year. Some of them are debate debatable, whether they probably should have been JV or varsity, right? Just because of the format and the ABC brackets and different things like that, that we ran. So we just felt like adding in that, um, that component provides some legitimacy to this process and making sure that um, some of those girls who have, um, uh, you know, obviously been been a little bit more um, battle tested, um, are you know not falling through the cracks, if that makes sense. So um, the third point, then moving on, are common opponents, and then the fourth one is overall record. So if we need to get into something where they have, you know, had had a few, um, I think I've got a. Oh, okay, Tim, I'm going to allow you to talk here really quick. Uh, yes, I just had a question about the seating criteria. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't and shouldn't common opponent go ahead of what happened last year? My my thought would be head to head common opponent. Um, I understand your your thinking with the the record because of the scrambles, but I would think common opponent would trump what happened last year. Um, so at this point, this is what we're going to go with. And I, you know, we've debated that back and forth as well and had a lot of conversation about that. Um, so, you know, obviously if we need to make changes for the next year, we'll have a lot more data and criteria to go on, uh, for next year, but this is the way that we're going to do it for this year. But I totally understand your question there. Can you still hear? Okay. okay go ahead. And my, my other question was. I understand having a roster listed before we get to the regional site. Let's say I have a girl listed at, I have her signed up at 120. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I get yep. to the tournament and I want to move her to 125. Am I still going to have that option? 
Yep, so I'm gonna go through that here in just a second, okay? Thank you. Yep. Okay, so moving on from that, um, you guys, uh, again, if you're following along in our manual, um, you're gonna see the order of rounds. So you can see the, the breakdown for all of those things. Um, so if you're able to pull up our manual and go through this with me, then that's great. Um, you can kind of see what I'm talking about as I'm going through it. Uh, so again, all of those are really well kind of defined there. Uh, weigh-ins, okay? So this is where we're going to weigh ins the day of the event, okay? Like I said before, it's gonna be a nine o'clock sharp weigh-in. Um, you guys will have, your athletes will be allowed 10 or like I said, at 7.30. There will be space, uh, warm up mats for them to, um, if they need to, you know, if they're worried about their weight, they need to check scales, they need to exercise off a few more ounces. There'll be time for them to do that in the morning. We are not going to, well, we'll have some of the stuff, stuff set up the night before. We're not allowing athletes in the night before to practice or cut weight or do anything like that within those facilities. So if you're traveling, you're going to have to arrange that um, on your own at that point. But um, like I said, we are going through the uh, regulations here for the entries. So wrestlers cannot be entered into a weight class lower than that permitted. Um, obviously that's uh, under something that we understand all season, okay? Um, they can be entered in a weight class which they can make weight and one weight class above. Okay, so for your final entries, including any entry changes or the weight class at which wrestlers will weigh in, they must be made with the tournament manager or his or her designee uh, before weigh-ins begin. So essentially you've got to, like how we're saying it, okay, if you, um, you, you can't weigh in at two different spots, right? So it's like you've got to commit to weighing in with a hundred pound group, okay? So to answer that, your question there, Tim, so the declaration of weight class in which each wrestler will compete must be made with the tournament manager uh, before the last person steps off the scale, okay? So that is, that is the time to do that. If you had an athlete that did not you know, make weight, then that decision needs to be made immediately um, if they will be allowed to go up at that point, okay? So... Again, okay, it looks like Jacob, I'm gonna allow you to talk here really quick. Quick question on that. That's just, uh, um, an uh, you're still only allowed one, one wrestler per weight class, class though, right? You have, Correct. Uh, yep, okay, that's all I need to know. Yep, thanks. Okay, so again, if you guys have further questions on that, you can reach out to either myself or, or Matthew, but that's how we're going to be doing it. Those, you know, are essentially the regulations that are in the handbook right now. So, um, but again, you know, it's not gonna be one of those things where you bring a bunch of people uh, just to be able to get them into the pass gate door and then start, you know, um, throwing people here or there where you think they might go. So, so have a plan. What I'm telling you guys is to have a plan of who is going where um, when you walk in those doors, okay? Which you should have already. Um, so your, um, okay, I'm gonna actually before, I'm, I'm gonna just continue to go through this and then I'll get to our tournament roster right after that because that's a little bit more in depth. But again, um, we'll do be doing uh, skin checks, all that kind of stuff, like, like normal. And I get, again, some of these tournaments or some of the events that you may um, have gone to are probably maybe been a little more loosey goosey or maybe not, um, you know, eyes totally on you all the time. But again, this is a process that we are going to treat like state. Um, we are going to um, really make sure that everybody is following proper procedure. Okay. So skin checks, or something that's gonna be, uh, it, along with the way in very legitimate there, okay? We'll have athletic trainers on site. Um, at the end of the day, it just like, like on the boy's side, right? That if you have an issue where um, there's a skinned condition, but it's being treated, you need to have a skin check form, okay? So simply um, just saying, yep, something's being treated. If there's a question about something, um, then that's not going to be good enough, right? We are the, the medical staff that's on site has the final say in being able to override anything that is questionable at that time. Okay. Um, so then 
Uh, moving on from that, um, I did talk about this just briefly before. If we have a state qualifier that's unable to advance, um, we need to be notified of that. So the girls union office, okay, needs to be notified of that uh, by 9 p.m. on Wednesday leading up to um, leading up to state. Okay, so I'll go through that a little bit more, but that is in the manual. So you'll see that when we get into things concerning state, then that's something that um, we'll be talking about as well. So again, that does affect, you know, making sure we have our place winners out to five. Okay, so now I'm gonna dive into the tournament roster, okay? So this is different than just entries into the track wrestling system, okay? So again, like your normal tournaments, you're going to be asked to submit entries into the track wrestling system, okay? Again, one, uh, one athlete per weight class per school is what your entries will look like, okay? Um, if there are changes that need to be made to that, then um, we can do so the, you know, leading up to that event, you'll just have to reach out to myself, um, but try to really, you know, it's, it's one of those things that like have a plan um, when you put your entries in that that is who you are going to um, have show up that day and have, have compete, okay? So the tournament roster is, found on bound. And I know some of you have already seen it because some of you have done a great job and already filled that out. So thank you. Um, again, that is not going to be due um, until Tuesday, January 24th, essentially the same time as your track entries are due. That is when your bound entries are due. Okay. So 10 AM. And again, if there are people who are missing, we'll do our best to try to track them down, but we have to have that hard and fast deadline. So if you are a school that is missing your entries, um, that's going to be a really big problem for you if you're trying to trying to compete, right? Um, so we really need to make sure that when you are filling out your roster, okay, so really hear this. If you take nothing else away from this, um, it should only include personnel that have specific meet day or school related responsibilities. Okay. So this is not an opportunity for mom and dad who have been taking pictures mat side all year and who are great fans and great supporters to get in free in the pass gate. Okay. That that's not what a pass gate is for. Okay. So we have our roster of athletes who are entered into the tournament. Okay. So if you do not have, if, if you have a, a, a handful of athletes that are not entered into the tournament, okay, they are not going to be allowed through that player pass gate, through the athlete pass gate, okay, they're going to have to buy a ticket and come later, okay, that's just the way that it is, okay, um, and so, uh, you know, make, make plans accordingly of who is going to be riding the bus and who's not, because we are not going to be responsible for people that you did not plan for accordingly for that event, okay? So um, I've got a question here on that. Yeah, okay. I, saw, I saw in the information that we got that we're taking for whatever tap, towel tappers and the other people were taken for the regional site, are they gonna be allowed in for that then? Are you, are you, for, are you talking about for your tournament workers? Yeah. Yes. What's that? Yeah, if you are working the event and we have you and we have you, we'll, we'll coordinate um, our workers and things like that with you um, to make sure that those people will be coming in through the pass gate. So that'll be a completely different thing at that point. But good question. We'll, we'll have Madison coordinate with you because you're at the Central Iowa site. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, but really with that, again, um, we are allowing six additional personnel, okay? So that would be like a head coach, assistant coach, maybe you have a volunteer coach, two managers, medical personnel, okay? We're allowing those people to be put down on the pass list to come in, okay? Um, again, in the, in the roster, um, you will see that this does not include cheerleaders, okay, or a cheer coach. So those are not people that you have to put down on your list. They're going to have a separate process, okay? Um, and that is not your bus driver. So you don't have to list your bus driver. You don't have to list 
your administrators unless they are also coaches, okay? So just understand what we're asking for there, okay? But I cannot make it more clear. This is not an opportunity for you to get other people in who aren't coaching, okay? That's just, that's something we really want to avoid. If we get to the point we can, we, you know, we'd be able to pull up and cross-reference who is BOEE certified. These are school coaches. These are not club coaches, okay? So if we run into an issue where we are seeing that your pass list is not matching up to who you've got entered or who um, is in attendance, then that is going to be a big issue, right? So my boss is on here right now and she would be the first person to say is anybody that abuses that will be in, I mean, massive amounts of trouble. You're gonna be on the radar. Um, and you know, if it's up to me, then you're gonna find out what it's like to coach with one coach at the state event, okay? For however many kids that you have, okay? Again, we're giving some leniency in that we know that, you know, this, this super regional is, is big and that there's gonna be a lot of moving parts. So we want to make sure that you're able to be adequately staffed, but with the right personnel, and not outside people, okay? Um, so if you have questions about that, if you have concerns about that, again, email me, but that is the expectation moving forward that you do not abuse the pass list, okay? Because we've seen it all. So um, so uh, with that, we're ticketing, okay? So all of our ticketing, those are going to be found and available uh, for each of our super regional sites on January 20th, okay? So that's in five days. Um, they are, the only one that is going to be on bound is going to be Luther College, okay? So there will be um, the bound option to purchase online and there will be a point of sale for credit cards at the door, okay? No cash, but they will help you with credit cards for anybody who needs that, okay? The three other locations, Tyson, um, Hy-Vee Hall, and Alliant Powerhouse, those three will also have an online ticketing option, and then they will have a point of sale um, at their designated ticket booths there right outside or connected to that hall, okay? Looks like Trevor's got a quick question. Go ahead, Trevor. The question has to do with the bound roster. When I went in and tried to start filling it out, it doesn't show up any athletes for the tournament coaches i can enter them just enter them but for athletes it's supposed to search them and i don't have any athletes so how do i get them in the system or how does that work yeah so so your your ad should be able to help you with that okay so it's um essentially yes you will likely have to import them in to be able to then add them so some schools already have it set up where they use bound for their roster purposes and those athletes are already in there but um, otherwise you will have to add your athletes in first before you can pull them to the roster. But again, it's what, it's what happens with essentially every other sport or should be happening there. So your, your AD should be able to help you do that. It's essentially just adding their name in and then pulling it over. Um, but Trevor, if you're still having a problem with that or some other people are, we can connect you with Bound so that you guys can um, get that figured out. But first go to your um, AD or your administration. A lot of times the administrative secretary, if there's one of those, will be able to help uh, put kids in that roster and then pull them over. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, that is something, thanks for bringing that up, Trevor, because that's something that you don't want to wait until the last minute to do, okay? So, thanks. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to kind of move on and then we'll take some questions again after this. Okay, so just hold tight with some of those because I see some hands going up there. Um, administrator passes, those are obviously that those are good. We're allowing them at our state tournament as well. Um, but those are passes to get you into the facility. Those don't get you like the VIP credentials to get down onto the floor and whatnot. We're going to keep those spaces um, really tight really cleaned up. So um, there's just, we've got some designated personnel as far as our own people and as far as other administrators um, who are, we are going to have um, support that. But it, your admin passes, if you go through those pass gates, you can sign in and, and, and show your card. And that is good for you plus one person, okay? Don't bring your whole family, okay, administrators out there, don't bring your whole family to the pass gate and expect that they will all get in, okay? It's not how we're operating. Uh, for super regional or 
for the state event. Okay, just to be clear. Um, okay, um, again, kind of moving through this, we've already talked about warm up sessions, we've already talked about tournaments and awards. Um, something that I do really want to touch on really quick for super regionals is that, you know, our all of our venues are aware that, you know, um, athletes, uh, particularly in wrestling, after their weigh ins, they might have a specific diet, they might have nutritional different nutritional needs than other athletes. Um, and so we are allowing you to bring in food through the pass gate that morning. Okay. So um, again, do not abuse this. This is not for you to come in and put a, a full spread of food um, in some back corner of the arena somewhere. Okay. If you normally bring a small cooler or a tub, or if your athletes can put something um, in a small cooler and put it in their backpack, something like that, that would be great. Again, we don't need a whole caravan of food coming in because these arenas who normally have policies against us uh, against that are, are being understanding and working with us when it comes to that. Okay. Um, so coaches, I'm really happy that you're on mute right now. So I can't hear the collective sigh, but we are not having, um, big spreads of food for our coaches rooms. Okay. At these events, again, if you want to bring in something, um, just something small through those pass gate doors in the morning, you're, you're able to do that. Okay. Um, there's going to be concessions at all of those events. Okay. Our workers will have meal tickets, but coaches just plan accordingly for yourselves that day that there will not be a big food party. And again, that is just because, um, you know, essentially we're going to get charged out the wazoo if we attempt to do some of those things. Okay. So be smart, have a plan coming into that at that point. Um, that's going to be the same thing with cheerleaders and, um, there will be some more communication coming out from that, um, the coaches association, from the cheer coaches association about some of their process and their verbiage and things like that. And so um, be on the lookout for that. We'll link that into our tournament information. So if you have cheer coaches asking, are they going to be allowed? Is this going to be a thing? Yes, we are allowing. We're allowing six cheerleaders and one coach. Um, or a sponsor to come with them. Again, they will come through our pass gate. We will give them wristbands, okay? The expectation, again, not to get too far into it because communication will be coming out from the cheer side is that they will be in uniform um, when they arrive, just like they are for um, other postseason events on the boys' side, and that they'll be ready to roll. But we will have a designated area for them. We will have um, locker room available for them, those types of things, so that they can... Um, you know, be there for the day and be comfortable, but we're not having a massive cheer room with food and all the things. Um, when we, you know, if we end up giving this event back to the schools, that's something you guys can all look forward to providing at that point. But again, be prepared with a plan. Um, spectator guidance. Okay. So again, something that's really, really important as we move through all of our events is that um, our spectator expectations at our postseason, we have really um, upped our, upped our ante on this, up the game on this in that, um, we're really cracking down on essentially how we are handling, um, our spectators. Okay. We're, uh, if Jean's still on here, you know, our kind of our policy is, um, if you say the F word, get the F out, right. Get the F out. Okay. So, um, we're really coming down on language, profanity, uh, any sort of, um, you know, verbal harassment, things like that. We, you know, we don't even need to give people a warning. Like a warning is a courtesy if we see the need to do that. We do expect that at these events, there's some sort of, a, you know, especially at the state event, that there may be some um, administration present, especially if we know that there are issues. So we'd like to be able to, you know, this sport's going to be a little bit different. Our team sports, it's a little easier to have a designated person in front of a, a crowd and whatnot. But um, if you are there as an administrator, our expectation is, is that if you know that there's some fan behavior, if there are some issues, that you're helping to handle those things. But we have no problem, you know, telling people to to uh, to to take a hike and having them escorted out. Like we we we've done that several times this year, and we'll continue to do that. I think we take a lot of pride in um, really making sure that we're providing um, a positive atmosphere. 
And I think that it's totally necessary um, for us to, to be able to police that as, as we see fit. So um, again, it'll be us and other people, but if you, again, if you see people who are misbehaving, please don't, don't just leave it up to us to handle, okay? Because it'll be a conversation then if we have to remove somebody, it'll be a conversation that then involves their administrators as well um, and the, the people from that district as well to help uh, with that. So just again, so you all know, this, this comes into play with um, our state event. If we remove somebody day one, they're not allowed back for the rest of the tournament, day two into the tournament, anything like that for a fan or a spectator. So, um, and how we police that is that we say, if um, we know that you're there and we catch you there, then your team or the people from your squad are out. They're forfeiting, they're, you know, that you're, you're putting those type of people in jeopardy. We take it that seriously. So without getting into that, because I think we've had a pretty good season with that, um, just be aware that that is our expectation anytime we're hosting anything postseason. Um, into that manual, you'll see more on banners, noisemakers, signs, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, please just make sure your fans know those things going into it. We have people that have great signs that are decorated that we've got to confiscate at the door because we can't let them in with those things. Um, but just, and they act like they, they have no idea. So just please be communicating these things out to your people. Um, and really, um, you know, uh, the, the last thing really that I'm going to cover before I take some questions is just media. I've had a lot of media outlets, um, you know, getting in touch with us about postseason, which is great. Um, there are people who are so excited to cover these things. So um, when we have any sort of uh, broadcasting, radio broadcasting, things like that, that is free. We'll have them check in at the passing gate, sign in as media have a policy for that. Most media are aware of how all of those things work. So we'll handle those things. If you have people that are coming from your school um, that are you know, covering that type of stuff, then we just need to make sure that that is one legitimate person. Again, don't abuse that system and send mom with the camera on that side. Like we're, that's just not something, you know, as a wrestling person, I know how that works. That's not something we're entertaining. Okay. So um, again, they need to bring media credentials or some sort of paperwork stating um, who they're representing at that point. Um, if they, there is a fee to do any sort of video streaming that is on our website. Okay. That is also linked in our manual. Um, if you are doing video streaming at our event, okay, that does not give somebody floor access to video stream. That's like up from somewhere up top being able to video stream. Okay, so understand that you will not have mat to mat access if you're trying to video stream something. We are not providing video streaming for, uh, for our super regional event. So if you have people asking that, then just let them know. It's obviously a massive undertaking to do at one site, let alone four sites and to do that well. But obviously this will all be available on track wrestling. Um, and again, there'll be multiple streams of broadcasting that will be covering that. So, um, and then when we get to the state tournament, again, we'll go through this all when we have our state, um, our state recap is that there is no live streaming at our state wrestling tournament. Okay. So with that, again, just if, when in question, just have your media outlets reach out to our office and we can give them the right kind of direction at that point. Um, because again, we know that there are people who are really excited to cover this type of, type of stuff. So, um, okay. I will take some questions for anybody who's got that. Ethan, I think I've got you up now. I just had a quick question on the Luther College site. I think I read it right. That's no cash, correct? So all point correct. of sale for card at a time? Yep, yep. We'll have point of sale for card, um, but but no cash, okay? okay. So if you thank know you that much. there are people, what's that? Nope, thank you. That, that works well. I'll just let my parents know and let our uh, tech people. Thank you. Yeah, yep. So at every single site, there will be a point of sale. There just will not be cash at the Luther site. So thank you. Okay, Aaron Hume is going to allow you to talk. Just to clarify, there's there's no seating meeting at the regional qualifier. That is correct. How are they taking in? How is track taking in consideration to come up? 
That will be a Matt Shannon question. Matt, are you on here? The same seating system that's going to be used at the state term is going to be used at the district or the regional qualifiers. So that's going to be built in. It's going to be a, a point system from track based on those credentials or the um, seating criteria that Aaron listed off. Does that does that answer your question, Aaron? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Randy. Randy, are you there? Okay. Um, Brant, do you have a question? Yeah, will our managers still be allowed to videotape um, our own matches on iPads? For super regional, they will be allowed to do that. Yeah, for super regional. For state, they will not be. Okay, thank you. That is a great question. But again, those managers need to be on your pass list, okay? So that that's, we're, we're not like interested in having like a gaggle of people, right? Just handing off iPads and things like that. Um, they will have to be a credentialed person to be able to record for that. Great sure. question. Thank you. Yep. Okay. All right, Jaeger, I think I've got you unmuted. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Dylan. With the bracket type being used, wrestlers cannot wrestle more than six matches, correct? Okay, this is a this is a great question. I'm really happy you brought this up because I actually had this in my notes and then I, I skipped over it. So so NFHS states, right, that we um, that we can only wrestle six times in um, in postseason. Okay. So if it comes down to it, we do have board approval from our board and based on the information that we have in terms of what mat time looks like and things like that for our athletes that if we needed to move to a um, seventh match or whatnot to be able to complete the tournament, we have the ability to do so. So just be prepared for that, right? Which seems like a lot, but we also know that a lot of times those first rounds can move very quickly, okay? So um, with the information that we provided our board, we do feel like it's still, um, safe for our athletes to be able to, if they need to pick up one or two matches to be able to get through our rounds that they can do so. But that is just, again, for our postseason process, that's not for anything else, okay? Um, okay, um, August. Are, are we still going with the 45 minute rule? Um, so if at this point, I think that we will, because we are only, because we're using four mats, I don't think that we'll have to expedite that. We will have the ability to do 30 minutes if we need to, um, but I do think we're going to do, um, stick with 45 as much as possible and going through that with Matt and looking um, at how those things are really gonna probably play out. Um, we'll only go to 30 minutes if we really need to. I think um, how we have these this timed out is that, um, and Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're thinking that we'll be done probably by 6 p.m. or so, five or 6 p.m. Just based on the math that he has done with these rounds and things like that. So it should be good there. Okay, and then I've got um, T I S A, Isa. I've got. You want to ask a question? Sorry, I don't know what your name is. Yeah, this is Tom. Sorry. Um, oh, sorry. sorry, it's Tom Isa. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Will Will the brackets regionals be released early? I know mistakes can happen, and that, that way we can look through it and see if there's any discrepancies. Um, I do not believe that we are releasing those. 
So if we have any issues, as far, that's why we really need you guys to double check your spelling and doing that kind of stuff. We're not planning on releasing those until the, the morning of. So we will have time to um, make some adjustments if we need to, as far as spelling or, you know, if there's been a, a huge mistake, having a conversation about that. But at this point, um, you know, I, I think in conversation with um, our office and, and Matt and our advisory committee and things like that, it's probably going to open up a bigger can of worms to release those things on the front end. So, but that is a good question. Thanks. Okay. Um, we've got any more questions? If your question has been answered, please go ahead and lower. I'm gonna go ahead and lower those hands. And then if there's anybody else that's got a question. Trevor, do you have, do you have another question or is this the same question? No, it's another question. Okay, perfect. Um, about seating, I'm looking at the criteria, obviously number one is head to head. So I'm asking, and maybe the other person that's on the line could answer it better. Yeah. There's going to be some situations where girls have losing records, but may have beaten five of the girls that are at the bracket. So since head to head is number one, then they should be ahead of those five girls if they've beaten, correct? Correct. Okay. That is, that doesn't happen in tournaments throughout the rest of the year. If you have a losing record, they don't even let you get seated. So that's why I'm clarifying that. Correct. Yep. That is because we know that there um, we we talked about making sure that there is a winning record or things like that. But we also know that, again, with um, the scramble matches and some things like that, it's just created a unique situation where there uh, girls have wrestled a lot potentially. Um, and again, some of the, you know, those matches have been set up a little bit differently. So we're we are taking those things into consideration. Thank you. Yep. Okay, August, do you have another question? Yes. Okay, go for it. Um, is there going to be a minimum match uh, count on on records? So a girl um, might. Yeah, we had we had talked about that initially. Um, I don't believe that that is going to be the case. Um, but that is something if we if that changes, then we will let you know. Um, but it won't be required to enter into the tournament. Um, it just, no. um, at this point, we're not requiring it for seating at this point, but again, that's going to be, it's going to be pretty hard to get some I mean, people seated. I mean, if a girl is, if a girl's five and oh, and another girl's 25 and two, I mean, there's a little bit of di difference there. Correct. Yeah. Um, uh, again, Matt, unless you want to speak to this, I mean, this is. This is the way we're going right now. I know we talked about a 10 match minimum to be considered, because I know that can mess with the winning percents as well. Okay. So we'll have some more conversation. If that changes, then um, we'll send something out tomorrow. But at this point, you know, at the end of the day, everybody still got to show up. It's got to show up and wrestle. So it's the beauty of our sport, right? Um, okay, Dan, go ahead. Okay, I think I can answer that question. Um, all the seating criteria is listed head to head 2000, you know, place winners from last year, common opponent, overall record, things like that. It is a point system, not a true, like, oh, I beat that girl, I should be seated above her. It's a point system like they do at the boys state tournament. That's the way I'm understanding this. Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yes. So yeah, essentially, you just earn points for for those things, it's not necessarily this above this, above this, above this, it's point system, correct. So, um, Tom, do you have another question? Molly, you know she's beaten her three times now. Yep, I can yeah, still hear you. One more Go. question for you. Yep. Um, based on what the guy just said about uh, asking about if not having to have any matches toward the season, will a zero zero be Seated lower than someone with a losing record? Doesn't have, sorry. I hope I'm unmuted. You're, you're, you're not yet. Dan, you are. I was gonna uh, say the point system falls in there. Right. 
So again, I, this is, and this is exactly why we're not having a seeding meeting because our, our season has been a little bit different, right? And how we've rolled some of these things out. There's just a lot, um, you know, a lot of stuff there. So um, again, we can have, we'll, we can send out more clarifying points this week. Um, I'll work through some more things with Matt to make sure everybody understands exactly what we're doing here. Um, yeah, the end of the day, right? Everybody's got to show up and wrestle, which we're really excited about. So um, at this point, um, I'm going to end the webinar. If you guys have further uh, questions and things that need to, um, you know, need to be addressed, then we can absolutely, um, I can, we can absolutely do that as we go. Feel free to email me and we can kind of go from there. But um, I want to just take a second and, and thank you all. Um, you guys have done a fantastic job of getting us the information that we've needed to move forward. Uh, when we asked for you guys to send in, um, you know, where your projections were as far as where your kids were going to go for super regionals and things like that. I, I think we had 170 out of 185 programs respond, which is like, that's, that's a, a minus material right there. So we are super excited about that. That helped a ton in being able to feel like we can accurately place some people um, within the regions. Um, and just, you know, um, it really, uh, can bring a lot of great legitimacy while providing some amazing opportunity here for our postseason. Um, and again, if uh, we, we totally understand that the super regional format is something new and something different, um, it's really been able to give us some great flexibility and um, allow for the growth of the sport this year. We'll see how it goes. If you guys are not satisfied with how this is all gone, that's totally fine, totally understandable. We'll be taking feedback after the season on those things, but just understand that we'll probably be the first ones in the office to know whether or not it's, it's working or not. Um, but we just ask that you guys continue just to, to dig in. Your athletes are doing amazing things and being a part of history for us this year. And I hope that you guys can continue to be really proud of that. I said, you know, our goal in the office is to uh, really finish this season out with an exclamation point because I think it's something we can all be excited about um, and really put a stamp um, to this first season um, and and not a question mark right of what are we doing because I, I think we've got a really good handle on it but it again um, how you all are promoting and selling your programs in this sport has been phenomenal I've gotten tons of great feedback from our officials um, who have worked on their own system and done some really great things in the sport there. So make sure when you see your officials at your events this week to give them an extra thank you. But, um, our, you know, again, I can't speak enough to the coaches and administrators who have really, um, you guys have done a ton of work in preparation and set, set ourselves up to do some really amazing things, not only at the end of this season, but going into next year. So again, thank you guys all for your time tonight. And, um, this will be available tomorrow. So without further ado, have a fantastic evening.